Alrighty, folks, let's get this going, shall we? Welcome in, everybody. Hello, good morning. Good morning, good morning. It is a beautiful Wednesday morning for me here in Northern California. My name is Voodoo Val, and I'm gonna be your instructor for the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge today. How, how's everybody doing? Space Kitten says, I may do a vampire kind of thing. Are you cosplaying with me at the end of these challenges? Is that is that what's happening? Because I am so for that. Um, so, some of you folks may not know, I like to, I like to cosplay. Um, I have been a, a lot of things um, on, on these streams. One time I painted myself completely purple and became an elf. Um, I have been various characters from Star Wars. I have been a witch. I have been a lot of things. Um, and I'm going to be cosplaying on the final day of this challenge. So not this coming Friday, but the Friday after, um, this coming Friday. And I would love if you folks want to do a cosplay with me, I would love if you folks would dress up in costume and post me a picture in the Discord. That's what this whole thing has been about. You think you're here for Photoshop? I'm here to finally convince Adobe Live to cosplay. That's, that's, <laughs> I do cosplay, yes. I do. I do. And I would, I would love, I would, <laughs> I would love to do um, to do a, a group cosplay with you folks. Um, I think that would be fabulous. But um, without further ado, let's kind of dive into what we have planned for today. Um, if you folks are unfamiliar with the challenge, I'm about to give you a little rundown, give you the deets, and let you know what's up and how all of this works, um, how you can get involved with me, how you can register for the challenges and all that good stuff. If you are over on the YouTube channel, please come over to behance.net slash live. That is where I'm going to be reading the um, chat and um, where all of the helpful links and things uh, for the challenges are going to be posted. So definitely come over here and check that out. Uh, we have so many wonderful people over here. We got Space Kitten, who is definitely going to be cosplaying with me on Friday because now I have my heart set on it and that's what I want uh, Sam's like bamboozled Sam Peterson art is over here um, Tim Mo Beast is here uh, Kim Steve Nick Christine Stoney Philip Frank Afroja Uma Korn it is so good to see all of you folks um, I think we have uh, General Kenobi hello there um, it's good to see you my friend Fairy is here and uh, yeah, so let's jump into it. I'm going to come over here to the landing page. If you go to behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop, you will make it to the landing page where all of the information you need is hosted. Uh, you'll know you're in the right place if you see the April 26th through May 21st uh, text here. If you don't see that, if you're watching this video and you don't see this date, uh, when you go to this page, it is because you're probably in the future doing challenges from the past. So all you have to do is scroll down here, um, and check out all of these past dates and time frames so you can go into the proper challenge. Today we're going to be working on challenge number two. Um, so you can just kind of flip through whichever one is the one that has the proper date listed. You can come through, you can grab, um, a link to watch all the other videos if you want and you can also click get started to grab the link to the starter file um, you can also join the discord now the discord is super cool because the discord is where everybody is posting all of their challenge entries and boy do we have a lot of super cool entries for the the challenge that we did yesterday so what we did was we took some simple shapes and um Took some simple shapes and we added texture and stuff to them to make them look as if they were like carved out of stone so we got these cool door knockers this one from renetta um we got looks like fairy did some some day one donut vectors for us um connie uh did like this oxidized steel ring which is really cool um uh Cudley actually said it would be interesting to redo this in adobe dimension and i agree i think that's super cool uh, but we got like all of these really awesome um, metal door knockers and we even got some folks that kind of took it a step farther and added um, extra metal pieces and kind of made their ring for their door knocker match um, real metal which was really cool we got some people um, like uh, Satlin who added like gems and stuff um, to theirs which, which I just thought was really really cool it looks like we got like a 
um, shapes and gradients. It looks like um, Master M made like a knife that has like this really cool like Beskar look to it, which is really neat. Um, Elaine actually made, um, let's see, uh, no, Trexie made um, their name. Let's see. Went for a totally completely different object after seeing Val's word examples. It's my cousin's birthday today, so I practiced on her name. Not sure if I got the value. Shading right made it look like chiseled smooth stones. Yes, I, I think you did a wonderful job, Trexie. This is great. Uh, but I'm just going to scroll through here and just... Gosh, this is so cool. That is that is so cool. You guys really went above and beyond with these. These are these are amazing. We, we got so many super cool uh, submissions um, with, with extra details and some that kind of used uh, metal textures and went for vibes that I never would have chosen for myself, but I'm super glad that I got to see you guys do it because now I feel like I've been inspired even to try some new things on my own. Um, and one of the last things that I wanted to end on was um, we had a, uh, let's see, let me scroll down here we had this one come through from Casey I think which I just thought was really cool because it was like you know like this interesting fantasy scene that he did like cause some people did the ring some people did their own thing and then like Casey kind of uh, or is it Casey or CK? CK kind of did um, like the ring in a totally different project. So I just thought it was really cool, but well done folks. Oh, here's another one coming through from Galagux. Well, oh, well done everybody. These are so cool. Um, and today we're gonna jump into the perspective challenge. So if you are on the landing page, all you have to do is hit this, um, let me kind of refresh here. Um, if you hit the uh, get started button here, you will be able to download the starter file that we're going to use and we're going to jump into some perspective. So this is the starter file that you will get for challenge number two. And I think it's fairy that suggested this. Um, and uh, I, I know that fairy is going to be upset because yesterday they were like, oh, I want to do perspective and I want to do people. I don't want to do boxes. And I've given him a box. I've given I've, <laughs> I've given you guys a cube to work with today. But fear not, we're going to go through a lot of different ways um, that this can be useful and why it is important to start with a box when you're working in perspective, okay? So um, you can see it says add furniture and decorations to a scene using perspective transform and blur filters when you're finished try polishing your work in Lightroom. I've got a scene image for you and I've got a couple of textures that you can use um, because what I'm going to do now you folks can go and get like an actual picture of some kind of furniture like a dresser or a couch or a chair or a trunk or whatever it is that you'd like to put into perspective. I'm going to make it from scratch because I found that I actually really enjoy making stuff from scratch, hence all the textures and stuff that we're going to need for this challenge. So you can follow along with me or you can go to the free version of Adobe Stock um, and look for some furniture that you can throw into your scene. Um, what I'm going to do is open my library because I have my stuff for my challenge today kind of um, organized here and I'm going to go ahead and open this Adobe Stock uh, photo. This is a, a hallway, a good old hallway. Um, that I thought was pretty perfect because it's got a, a pretty good um, example of like, you know, perspective kind of like on the single vanishing point. Um, and that's, I think that's a pretty good start when you're toying with um, perspective for what may be the first time. Um, that'll show them General Kenobi. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, fairy. I'm sorry, fairy. We are gonna, we are gonna work with a box, but I'm gonna show you how you can use the box to do other things. Um, so I've made this box for you ahead of time. And the reason why I've done it ahead of time is simply because um, I'm sure that you didn't wanna see me like create a box from scratch while we're on here because we have so many other things to do. So I'm gonna drag this box in here and I'm just gonna kind of toy with it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna experiment and find the perfect spot that this box belongs in order to look as if it belongs in this scene. Um, and the reason why I didn't just add the box in in place is because I want you folks to practice doing this and actually figure out where it goes for yourself to try and put your brain into the mode of thinking in perspective and figure out where it lands. Of course, I'm about to do it for you. So technically I'm giving you the answer, but toy around and, and, and warp it and, and figure out what you, what you want to do. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to right click this and I'm going to flip horizontal because I'm going to put this against this wall over here. And as you can see, as I set this down, right there doesn't really look exactly how we want it so I'm going to kind of shrink this in from the edges and I'm gonna grab this top and I'm gonna drag this down just to kind of push that into perspective there um, I'm gonna 
push it back just a little bit and I might even bring that back right there. All right, so now we have like this box that's like sitting in this scene and I think it actually looks pretty decent. It's, it's, it's there, it, there are weird colors that don't really work or match with the scene, but um, it, it does actually work um, with, uh, with the, the perspective. So um, now the next thing I'm gonna do is I am going to kind of start throwing my brain into the mode where I can start to imagine all the things that I could make with this box. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a red brush, okay? And I'm going to kind of outline for you where my mind is visualizing things on this box so that you can see how my brain works when I start to put things into perspective. So we've got the box um, and I'm just going to, to be honest, I'm gonna go and make like an outline around this box so that you folks can see like a, a nice perfect outline of this while I'm working. Boom. There we go. Um, so, you know, we've got this box and that's not a perfect outline because I've just held shift. What I've done is I've, I've clicked, I've tapped, held shift, and then clicked someplace else. And you can see that as long as I'm holding shift, wherever I tap, it makes a straight line. And I do have pen pressure on this brush, so it is um, not making a perfect line. But if I use something like the, you know, the hard round brush or like a brush that was like solid in its, um, you know, in its opacity and everything, you can see that it does in fact make like a solid perfect line from one place to the other. So maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll use this brush for now. Um, so one of the things that I am doing is I'm not only seeing this box, I'm also seeing um, the different lines through this box, similar to the grid that comes up when you do like a transform warp. So if I add these in, you can see like, I'm also thinking about these lines. I'm also thinking about these lines, okay? And again, this is not 100% perfect, 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 but it's gonna work um, for, for for what we need here today. So I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, like how this really fits into 3D. I'm also thinking about lines that probably go around this way um, and trying to, that one was a little, a little crooked, but trying to really keep, you know, this into perspective in my mind. Um, now, why is this useful? Because if I wanted to hide that box and I wanted to crank the opacity down on this, I would actually have enough um, guides to come in and say, well, maybe I want to put like an oval in here. Maybe I don't want to work with a box. Maybe I want an oval. Well, I could come in and I could you know, like throw in an oval. And then because I see these directional lines, I can start to kind of place in these, these curves here. And maybe we'll, maybe we can do one this way um, and start to like really envision, um, you know, kind of like this floating circle here. And it's not, it's not perfect, but you guys can kind of see like how my, how my mind is like placing stuff in. So I've got like now a completely different shape that is like hiding in this box. So maybe if I wanted to make something that was a little more um, uh, oval shaped, uh, a lot more soft, uh, I would have the ability to come in and actually do that. Let me grab like a soft round brush for erasing. Um, I would be able to come in and actually do that because I've been like looking at um, this perspective space and figuring out how I'm actually going to um, to place something else in there. You can also um, uh, control T to free transform, command T if you're using a Mac. Um, and I could come in and I could actually just put this on perspective and I could I could drag that out like so, control T or command T to go back into regular transform and like reposition that and go in. So then, you know, maybe there's a circle here and maybe, um, I don't know why, but maybe this is like a hovering oval just for the sake of like using the shape that I've made. And maybe there's a person sitting on it and maybe that person um, sits in the scene a little something like this. Like we'll put like a back, we'll put a little a little behind here and maybe their knee comes out like this, you know, and maybe this knee comes out down like that, you know, um, and maybe this is their, their shoulders 
you know, and then maybe this person's arm comes down like this and then the hands rest in the lap and then maybe this arm is like a little out a little more, you know, and the hand is right there and then there's a neck and then there's a head and we can kind of do something like that. So you can see how like this person is like really uncomfortably broad, um, but you can see how Using that box, using that circle can allow me to start putting people into a scene. It can allow me to start imagining what it might look like if a person was sitting in perspective in this space. Um, now, you folks might not also be um, illustrators because I'm an illustrator and I love to draw, draw, draw. Um, that is my bread and butter. That is where I feel the most comfortable. Um, so in the essence of that and knowing that not everyone here today has a stylus, but most everyone probably has a mouse, I'm going to use a mouse and I'm going to put some furniture into this space using my, uh, my guidelines and, and all that stuff. Okay. Um, oh my gosh. Hello, Angie. Angie Mossberg. That is such an excellent last name. I just love that. Welcome in. Um, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and hide these things and I'm going to uncover my box. And the way that I am going to invent my own dresser to just slap into the scene um, is I am going to use smart objects and shapes. So I'm going to come in here with my rectangle tool. Um, you can press U on your keyboard if, uh, if you would like. And I'm going to drag out um, this rectangle like so, and I'm going to make sure that these, um, corners are pulled in. You can grab these shapes and you can round the corners or you can sharpen them. And I'm going to make sure that they're sharp. And I'm going to come in here to my libraries and I'm going to fill that with one of my favorite colors. Um, and then I am going to control T to free transform command T if you are using a Mac. Um, and I am going to come in here um, and I am going to start kind of pulling these. Let's go into skew. I'm going to start like pulling this um, as like almost a, almost a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, like the side of this box. Okay. Um, and I can come back into free transform. Um, and I think I'm going to drop that right there. And then I'm going to right click and we're going to go to skew not skew, let's go to distort because I'm just gonna grab this point and bring this right up here and line it up. So I have like this face on the side um, of this and it's gonna turn it into a live shape, which is fine. Um, so I have like a, a you know, a, um, a rectangle here. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I am going to um, convert that to a smart object. Um, I'm going to control J or command J if you are using a Mac um, to duplicate this. And then I'm going to flip it horizontal, drag it over here, and I am going to pull it out. And then I'm gonna go into skew and I'm gonna pull this down. And I'm gonna zoom in here and just really make sure that it lines up with what I'm trying to do here. Let's see. I'm going to make sure. There we go. Let's go back into skew. Just bump it down a tiny bit. Um, and then let's go into distort. And I am going to grab this point and just throw this point right over here. And I might even Oops. Wow. That is not what I wanted. <laughs> We're not trying to get that insane with this. So I'm just throwing, I'm just throwing these, um, these together. Um, and it's not 100% perfect. You can see there's like tiny, tiny little gaps, um, here. Um, and actually what I could do if I wanted to is like maybe make this a different color. Um, Actually, I can come back before I duplicated that. Let me duplicate it now. Um, actually, I wonder what would happen if I went back to like this as a rectangle before I convert it to smart object. Let me see that. Well, that gives me my points, but I'll, I'll duplicate it from here. Um, and then I will flip horizontal um, and see how that goes. Um, and I am, can I change the, yeah, I can change the color of this. So I'm going to go ahead and change the color. I'll change it to this so that I can like really see it compared to everything else. Um, and what I'm going to do is make sure this is lined up perfectly and then we'll, we'll, we'll try it one last time. Okay. Um, and I'm going to go straight for distort this time. Um, 
and I am going to just drag out um, the corners of things and position it where I want. We'll throw this over here. It's a little slight bit strange, um, but we're going to do it. Um, and then what I'm going to do is take some of these textures that I have supplied to you folks, and I'm going to throw textures into these once I've converted them to smart objects. Um, and why is that important? Well, it's actually super, super cool, because if I do that, um, then I can double click them and jump into the files and start to add um, some random um, uh, to, not random, but I can start adding textures and things. Um, so I'm going to turn this purple. I'm going to make sure this is rounded out and I am going to control T to free transform. I'm going to go ahead and just throw it on distort and I'm going to grab these corners and I'm going to try not to be too precious with this um, since we are running out of time. So I'm going to throw this down. We're making our little, our little box. Looks like we've extended it a tiny bit, but that is okay. Um, I just want to make sure that I am throwing this in here. Um, relatively all right. Um, yes, we'll turn that into a life shape. Um, and now we have like all of these separate things. And so I'm going to right click and I'm going to turn each one of these into a smart object, smart object. And what we can do is we can also name these. So this is going to be called, um, wide side. Um, let's see, what is this? This is going to be called thin side and this one's going to be called top. Okay, so that we know what is what top. Um, so let's double click and jump into the wide side, shall we? If you have a smart object, you can double click the icon and it will open it for you. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and um, I'm gonna snag my textures, which you guys have these textures that you can use. I'm gonna grab these textures um, and I am gonna <laughs> drag this in here and I'm just gonna line it up. Um, with the with the rest of this, okay. Uh, I'm gonna throw it into distort, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna throw this texture in here, um, and we're gonna see what we get. Um, now, normally I would have been a little more precious with this, so when I open it, it's like a straight line. Um, you will have to spend a little more time making sure you orient your um, your smart objects because I you know I only have 20 minutes to do this, uh, but I'm just gonna go like that, and I'm gonna say save. Um, and then I'm going to come back over here to my, um, my starter file, my, my image. Um, and I have this nice texture on here and I can come in here and I can do all of these. So I can double click, I can open the thin side, I can throw, um, this in here and I'm going to do the exact same thing. Another thing you could do since there's a rectangle in there is I could also just say, create a clipping mask. Um, and then I could, um, make this larger and then I could just, you know, rotate it slightly like so. Um, and just do that. So I can say save. Um, and then when I come back in here, um, you can see how I'm starting to like create this wooden box, you know? Um, and another thing that I could do is I could come into that wide side and I could start adding drawers and stuff. So you folks kind of peaked the Martha Stewart version that I did for you um, already as I started to like drop in textures um, and things is I have created like this little thing in here. I've got like a whole dresser that I've just made and thrown into perspective. And all I did to kind of make it look more like it belonged in the scene is underneath this, um, what I did was I made a new layer. I pressed B on my keyboard to access my brush. I got a soft round brush, sampled shadows from the scene. Um, and then just started kind of blocking in shadows around um, this dresser to kind of make it look like it's sitting there. I wanted to add some light because it looks like light is coming in from this angle. So what I did was um, I made a new layer, put it on a clipping mask above my entire dresser um, piece here. I sampled some light um, colors from the scene. So like there's some light back down here. I grabbed my gradient tool, which is G on your keyboard. Um, if you press G and you get the paint bucket tool, all you have to do is right click um, and make sure you select the gradient tool. Um, and then I started, ooh, that is weird. That is not what I want. What I want is um, my basics right here. I'll come in, there we go. Um, and started adding 
um, you know, these this this light and throwing it on blending modes, just anything I could do to kind of make it look like it still belonged. Um, and as an added little bit um, of detail, what you can do once you create something to throw in your scene is to bring it into Lightroom. Um, and if you jump into Lightroom with your image, then you can do all sorts of stuff. You can come in and you can crop it. Um, it's not really like a super appetizing scene to stare at, but still a little crop might do it some good. Um, you can come into the um, the colors um, and start to uh, experiment with the light. Maybe we'll make this like kind of sepia. I actually like the sepia. Kind of um, brings in our our drawers and our uh, you know our dresser into the scene a little bit um, and start toying around with some of the settings there until you have like a finished thing. Um, I do have to take off because I'm I I'm coming to the end of my stream here. Uh, but I hope that there was, this was an interesting um, challenge for you folks. Um, if anything, just to get you into the mindset of thinking about how perspective works and what you can do with it in various situations. Um, I hope you had fun and I will be back tomorrow morning for another challenge, challenge number three, and I can't wait to reveal to you what it is. So much love everybody, happy designing. Please stay tuned for the next segment coming up after me and I will see you folks later.